Greetings. My name is Sebastian Bruno, and I'm one of the founders of Thai Vedic School of Healing, Movement, and Bodywork. This is a school that draws from the traditions of Ayurveda, Thai massage within the context of traditional Thai medicine and yoga therapy. And the focus of this school is to really understand and honor individuality, to understand our strengths and our weaknesses from an elemental perspective. So we use the five element system as a way to understand our individuality and our relationship between ourselves and our environment and others and the work that we do and the position of the stars and the plate of food, everything. What is your symbiotic relationship uh, with you and your environment? So these five elements are the elements of earth, water, fire, wind, and space or ether. Yeah? And we can use this as a map or as a language system to understand these relationships. Yeah? Within traditional medicine, following this five element model, we look at earth and ether, space, being the elements at the extremes of the spectrum as the most stable elements, meaning these are the elements that are less likely to go out of balance. So we right in the middle with uh, the elements of wind, fire, and water that most imbalances take place. Out of these three doshas, elements, it's the element of wind that is the most likely to go out of balance. This is because of the qualities of wind being mobile, erratic, unpredictable. This is the most malleable of the elements and therefore the one that goes out of balance the easiest. It is also this element that would lead all the other doshas, all the other elements out of balance. So it's our common troublemaker. For that reason, treating the wind element in traditional medicine is of great importance. And in Tavedic, we focus into the five winds in the body. We call them the five vayus. The word for wind, both in Sanskrit and in Pali, is vayu or vayu. And out of this element of wind, we have a subdivision of five five winds in the body, and they basically control directions of movement in the body. The first wind, the first value is prana value. It lives mostly in the head, and it controls the direction of movement inwards. This is very much how we perceive life, how we take in life through the senses, through the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth, our skin and sense of touch. It's our sense of perception. This controls all of the other winds, all of the other values. Um, the second value is Udana Vayu, and this is the upward rising wind. Um, it lives on the chest and the head, and it controls any upward rising motion, the speech, expression. It goes into the arms as a way of us expressing and acting into the world. Um, any hiccups, coughing, Sneezing, these are all signs or they're all expressions of uh, imbalances uh, or just natural expression of Udana Vayu. And Udana Vayu, it's also the wind that controls our higher aspirations, that driving force that aims us towards something higher. Call it God, call it existence, whatever name you have for it, that would strive. Uh, for a higher aspiration. Yeah. Then we have Samana Vayu, and Samana Vayu is basically the wind of digestion. It's this sort of lateral movement as food moves through the digestive tract and gets assimilated and absorbed into the body. It's that intercellular movement that takes place. Yeah. And this is the Samana Vayu, it relates to the element of fire, the fire of digestion. Viana Vayu is the wind of circulation. It's the wind that circulates all around the body. Uh, it relates very much with the element of water. So we have the circulatory system. We have the lymph. And then we have Apana Vayu. And this is the wind that moves from the waist down. Uh, controls that downward moving force. Urination, defecation, ejaculation, childbirth, anything that moves downwards. It is also very responsive for our ability to feel grounded and stable, and it very much relates to our ability of letting go. So we could say that wind is life, and life is movement.
wind always denotes movement. And you could say that health can be determined by how easily does life move through you? How easily do you take life in through the senses, in the form of food, in the form of experiences? How easily do you digest it, absorb it, assimilate it, circulate it through your entire body, your entire being? How able are you to use that energy, that life force, to express yourself, to act out in the world, to reach for your highest aspirations? And how easily do you let go? So within this series of videos, we're going to be exploring small sequences of body work where we're going to be targeting working with these five intelligences of movement. How to work with our apanavayu and create that foundation, the connection with the element of earth, where we're stable, rooted, grounded, supported, and able to let go with ease. How can we encourage Vyanavayu, the wind of circulation, connecting with the element of water, fluidity, adaptability, that circular, spirally, pulsing movement, uh, and distribute all that life force energy through the body. Working with Samanavayu, that wind of digestion, working also with the fire of digestion. This is the element that Samanavayu relates to. So we have a strong ability to process and digest life and its experiences. Uh, working with Udanavayu, clearing blockages that impede us from expressing ourselves both in a physical, mental, and emotional manner. And then working with Pranavayu, where we can clear obstructedness, tapping into the element of ether and space so we can open to perceive life with guidance, wisdom, and high intelligence. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed.